In this lecture, we're going to talk about the Groovy Council. I think one of the reasons that uh, Groovy is so easy to get started with is partly due to the Groovy Council. And the Groovy Council allows us to either create uh, or open up and run Groovy scripts without any fuss of setting up an IDE and learning how to use an IDE and configure projects. Um, it doesn't provide all of the full features that a full-blown IDE does, but it's really great for getting started and writing small scripts or testing code. Uh, we're going to look at building projects in IntelliJ later in this course, but a lot of the examples we're going to use and create throughout this course are going to be run right in the Groovy Council. So let's just go ahead and dive right into the Groovy Council. To open it, I'm going to bring up Terminal. If you're on Windows, uh, you can just bring up a command prompt and launch. As long as Groovy's on your path, you should be able to just type in Groovy Council and go ahead and launch the application. Okay, so this is the Groovy Council, and what we're going to do is just kind of walk around the different available options we have and take a look at it, some of the settings that the Groovy Council gives us. So right off the bat, we have this top section, and the top basically accepts keyboard input, while the bottom will display keyboard output. And you can use this little divider to kind of change the layout however you need it to be. But basically, we can just type in scripts in here, and this is actually a script, and we can go ahead and run this script. To do so, we can go up to script and run, or you'll see there's a command R shortcut key, which I usually use. I think it's control R on Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So control R or command R, and there is our result. So we just executed a, a legal groovy script here, and the result, uh, the last line um, that we're printing out here, is going to be displayed at the bottom. So if we wanted to do something else, we can say 2 plus 2. And now that result is displayed. So just to look at one of the, a couple of the settings we have here, by default, I don't think yours is going to have this, but there's an auto clear output on run. And if we don't do this, so if I come down and create another one, print line, hello world, and then there. So basically, every time that we go ahead and do this now, it's going to append to the output that is displayed below. So I really like to have this particular setting checked. So I want to auto clear the output on, on every run. So you could use the command W key shortcut to clear the output, but I really like to just clear it every time I run because there's no, I usually don't need to see what I did last. Um, another setting that you can have is you can show the script in the output. So if I run this, um, the thing, the first thing that you're going to see is the actual script um, before you see the result. Um, sometimes I guess that could be useful, but I don't like to have that on, and I think that's on by default, so I usually leave that off. Um, detach, no. We don't really need to show that, and then I like to, you know, these, these are um, by default on. And then there's a larger and smaller font, so we can easily kind of change the font size. So this is Shift-Command-L, so Shift-Command-L, and we can kind of bump up that font size or if we want to go shift command s and take it down a little. So that's a little bit about that. Um, let's go ahead and just look around. So from the file uh, we can actually create a new file or we can open up a new window. We can also open existing scripts so if we wanted to bring in a new script we could. Um, nothing really crazy here. Um, this is kind of cool though, uh, so the command um, sl uh, forward slash is actually a keyboard shortcut for a comment. So if I wanted to comment this out, I can go ahead and do so like that. Um, that's pretty handy. Everything else is kind of self-explanatory. Um, we looked at a lot of the view menu, uh, history, 
and then script. So the script we looked at, command R, allows us to run the script window. Um, we can also run just a particular selection. So if we didn't want to run everything in this window, we just wanted to say 2 plus 2 here, we could do shift command R. So I'm going to select that shift command R and then we're just running that particular line. Um, what is selected, we're not running the entire script. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then finally we have a couple more options here. So we can add a jar to the class path. Uh, if you're not familiar with Java, don't worry about it. But if you are and for whatever reason you need a dependency that you have a jar file for somewhere on your computer, you can go ahead and add that to the class path. Um, you can also add a directory. And then um, we, have a, we have a pretty cool tool here called the AST, um, which we'll get into in a second. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is write our mandatory Hello World application. Lucky for us, uh, it's really simple here in the Groovy Council. We can just type out Hello World. Um, remember, the print line is basically a default method, so we don't need the system.out from Java. We can actually just call print line, and I'm going to hit Command R to run it, and there is our Hello World. So let's kind of jump this up a bit. Um, let's say class person. So you'll see um, one of the downsides here as I'm typing, I'm not getting any IntelliSense. I'm not getting code completion. There's nothing to generate uh, code for me. Um, it's very raw. But again, for building these simple examples, the Groovy counts is really nice. So let's just say string first, string last, um, date, DOB. So now if we were to go ahead and run this, there's actually nothing we can run because that's just a class. We haven't done anything yet. So it says runtime exception. It's nice to be able to see the exceptions here too. Um, this isn't actually one that we're going to worry about at this moment, but the reason this is coming up is because nothing is actually run. So if we wanted to, we could say def p equals new person p dot two string. Actually, we can just print out p, and there's our object. Now, one thing I want to do though is a lot of times when you're coming when when you're coming from other languages or even Java, Java. Um, you may not understand what's actually happening behind the scenes. So one, one option you could do is actually compile a uh, groovy source file like this one and uh, take a decompiler on the class file and see what the actual generated code is. Um, it's nice to see what, what, what Magic's actually doing and you know what the result is. Another way to do that is to actually use the Groovy console. And there's this really cool tool here called the AST. So if we bring up um, the AST browser, we can see different compilation phases. phases. Uh, don't worry about that too much now. The default output is fine. But this gives us an idea of what the generated code looks like. Um, I don't want to actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that back. It's not really generated. Uh, what I'm, what I kind of want to get to is this is the byte code. This is actually what's written. So, so there's some things that go on with like creating those getters and setters and and doing some things behind the scenes. And this is what the actual code looks like. So now we can go in and we can see that it is a public class person. It implements Groovy object and extends the java.lang.object. Then you'll see it actually creates like a full um, private variable here, and it's a string value called first, or a java.util.date date of birth. Um, you'll see a whole bunch of methods that we didn't actually create, um, but there are some, some fun things going on behind the scenes that, that we'll get into later in this course. But then you see there's a get first, set first, get last, set last, get data bit, get date of birth, set date of birth. And those are all the, 
that generated getters and setters so that we don't have to write because in Groovy we just create those fields and those methods are created for us. So this is a really cool tool to inspect your Groovy source code and kind of find out what's going on behind the scenes. So I think that's all we're going to cover. Again, we're going to be using the Groovy Council a lot throughout this course. So I hope this was a good introduction and I will see you in the next one.